interrupt World of Adventure Sports to bring you the latest from Governor Christie. He's in Hoboken with Homeland Security Secretary Janet Napolitano and the Mayor Don Zimmer. Let's listen in. Uh, to see these things for herself, and we appreciate the continued uh, assistance of the administration. Also, want to thank the Salvation Army who's here for all their efforts here in Hoboken at the FEMA Disaster Center site. They have a canteen that provides three meals a day, hot beverages, comfort kits, and charging stations for folks. They're working to establish these in any community in need, and we appreciate the Salvation Army. I want to thank Senator Menendez and Senator Lautenberg who are here and toured with me, and Congressman Sears. Thank them all for being here and for their continued support as well. They are helping us in terms of our interface with the federal government, and uh, they have stood up and helped us a lot, and I appreciate it from all of them. We were just stopped by a shelter at the Elks, uh, where you see exactly what's so great about New Jersey. Um, New Jersey is volunteering their time to help those who have been most affected by the storm. Uh, we saw volunteers preparing and serving meals and providing real service to those in need here in Hoboken. I want to thank those folks for, for their hard work. And it's not just in Hoboken. I've been all over the state. And everywhere I've traveled, whether it's a local shelter or a Red Cross shelter, uh, an impromptu roadside table that neighbors put together just to provide food and drinks for people who are working. Um, this is the symbol of New Jersey coming together um, during a really difficult time. Uh, you know, a week ago today, we were preparing for the storm to come tomorrow. And uh, we're returning now to a new normal, one where power is coming back on, where people are able to start to fuel up again in their cars, where kids will be going to school, roads are cleared, and we'll have clean water to drink. Let me talk a few things specifically to you. First, about the power situation. Remember, we started off with 2.7 million households out of power. Uh, we are now under a million households under power as of this morning, which shows we're continuing to make substantial progress. Now, for those of you who are out there listening who don't have power and are at a neighbor's house or a friend's house or at the Elks Club, I know that when I tell you we're under a million people out of power from 2.7, that that does not mean a damn thing to you unless your power's on. I get it. I get it. All right. So um, we won't stop working until every last resident has their power back on. I was on with the utility company CEOs this morning at 930. I'll be on with them again at 530 this afternoon. And we are going to continue to push and shove and use my type of gentle persuasion. And you know, I'm able to do that. Very subtle, gentle persuasion to try to bring them along. Um, now, to let you all know what you're in store for, though, one of the things I've demanded from them in this storm, because we learned this in Hurricane Irene, is twice a day they have to provide me with their worksheets, what towns they're in, how many people they're restoring to power that day. Those are all on the Internet. You go to nj.gov, click on the governor's site, and then there's an icon for Hurricane Sandy. You click on there, pick your power company, and they will tell you, look for your town. Where, how many are they going to restore that day so you know what you're in for? Um, I will make it go faster, but it will help you to plan. The faster part is me um, trying to get on them. Um, down in the South Jersey, Atlantic City Electric now has 98% of its customers online. Most of the rest of the people who aren't are people who probably can't receive power because their homes have been so destroyed. Uh, so we're, we're very clear on that now. And they're moving their crews now up to North Jersey and Central Jersey to help JCP and L at PSC and G. PSC and G has 78% of their, their customers now with power, a restored service to all of our major gas refineries, and 80% of the schools in its service territory. I'll talk more about that in a minute. JCP and L has 75% of its customers with power, and uh, Orange and Rockland, up in northern Bergen County, has just 61% of its customers with power. So I got a special call with them this afternoon. 61% is not acceptable after this period of time, so we're going to be on them. Just so you understand what we mobilize, normally we have about 3,000 utility workers on staff in the two major North Jersey, Central Jersey utilities, JCP and LPSC and g On the ground today, there are 11,000 utility workers working, 8,000 from out of state. They are being housed in two places, and FEMA has done this for us. We have 4,000 being housed at Monmouth Racetrack and 4,000 being housed in Linden. So that's where they go to sleep tonight. That's where they go to get fed three meals a day. And all that has been stood up by Jennifer Velez and the Department of Human Services and FEMA in conjunction. 
Um, so I owe Jen a great debt of gratitude, and so do we all, for getting those people in here. Now they can have a place to sleep and to eat when they're not working. But 11,000 people are on the ground here in New Jersey to restore your power. Now, on fuel, we're working to create order and better access for fuel and for New Jerseyans. First thing I have to tell you is we do not have a fuel shortage. What happened was when power went out to the refineries and power went out to the pipelines, they couldn't move the gas. The gas is there. Well, now all the power's on to the refineries, all the power's on to the pipelines now, so we're now moving, moving fuel. In addition, um, the president ordered that 22 million gallons of gasoline be moved here, both here and New York, split between the two of us. And this morning, in Bergen County, Hudson County, Essex County, Passaic County, and Monmouth County, there are National Guard tankers moving to gas stations that have power but no fuel all across those counties. I'll be giving you updates later today on the specific gas stations that have been fueled so you can go to those gas stations, know they have fuel and, long, and shorter lines. So we're moving that along. Uh, we also are working under the odd even system to try to provide some order and shorter lines. So please, today's an even day. If you have an odd license plate, don't go because the state police are going to be there and they're going to kick you out of line and send you home. So let's save everybody the, uh, the trouble. If it's an even day today, which it is, go with your even license plate, get some gas today. Um, I also got a report today from BP that just today, BP has opened 100 more stations because power has come back. And they have fuel in their tanks. So look for BP stations as well. President also set $1.5 million in free civilian fuel for New Jersey and New York. And we're prioritizing that by giving it to the utility companies and first responders to get them up and running so they can move around without having to worry about fuel. Um, so those military trucks are moving around the state now. And I'll have a report for you later today about Hudson, Essex, Bergen, Mom, and more gas stations we've been able to open to the fuel being delivered by the national schools. We want as many children to be able to go back to school tomorrow as possible. As long as the conditions are safe, we're encouraging districts to be creative in order to open their doors. As of last night, out of the 2,400 schools in the state, uh, more than 800 are open tomorrow, and more are working today to try to get open for tomorrow. We expect to have more information by later today. Parents should check their school district's websites, or if you don't have power, go to your local OEM in town. They'll have the list of schools that are going to be open for tomorrow. Roads. From Highlands to Monmouth Beach, we're almost clear. And from Bay High Head to Seaside Heights, uh, Jim Simpson and the New Jersey DOT has built a passable road over that inlet that was created by Hurricane Sandy in Maniloking. So we now have a passable road to be able to move construction vehicles down to the southern part of the barrier island to be able to clean the debris out of there and begin to bring some normalcy back to those places as well. Um, after focusing on 35, DOT is now working on the side streets with 250 contractors and 100 trucks on the Barrier Islands. If you were down there, you would not believe it. The sand on the side streets in these places are, are calf deep, driven off of the beaches by the storm surge. And so we have to clean those places up before we let folks go back on the island to inspect their homes and their property. Uh, public transportation, New Jersey Transit bus service is now at 90%. Uh, New Jersey Transit has resumed limited rail service today on the following four lines, the North Jersey Coast Line between Woodbridge and Penn Station in New York, the Raritan Valley Line, the Main Port Jervis Line, and the Atlantic City Rail Line. Service also resumed Friday along the, north, uh, the Northeast Corridor. As of today, two rail lines are again serving New York Penn Station. Clean water. Uh, we continue to lift the boil water advisories in only four communities. Clean water. Uh, we continue to lift the boil water advisories in only 800-621-FEMA. Don't do it all at once, but 1-800-621-FEMA, okay? You get on there, it is easy. They walk you through some simple questions, and within 24 to 48 hours, one of these FEMA representatives you see behind me will be to your home to assess the damage to your home and to your property, and to begin to help give you the benefits that are necessary. And other good news, we now know that all 21 counties in New Jersey will be included in the major disaster declaration, so anyone who is harmed in any place in New Jersey is now going to be eligible for assistance from FEMA. Um, also, if any of you have lost your job due to the storm, uh, we now authorize for disaster unemployment assistance. All you have to do is go on the internet, njuifile.net, njuifile.net, walk you right through the form and we can get 
unemployment benefits wire transferred to your bank account. Uh, that's because we've qualified for disaster unemployment assistance as well. We have a FEMA permanent disaster center here in Hoboken, in addition to mobile and permanent sites all across the state. We have centers already open in Hudson, Bergen, Ocean, and Cape May. The remaining will be open in all the counties over the next 48 hours as sites become available. Uh, we also have set up a relief fund, specifically for New Jersey. The Hurricane Sandy New Jersey Relief Fund is being shared by the First Lady, and we've already received $3 million in contributions to this fund, $2.5 million coming from John Hess of the Hess Oil Company. And so we're, we're, we have an up and operational site now for those who want to donate, um, and we'll give out those, uh, those websites to all of you. Um, and for folks out there who are listening, if you want to help New Jersey, help fill in the gaps between FEMA and private insurance, uh, please donate to the New Jersey uh, Hurricane Sandy Relief Fund. And we'll put all that information out uh, real soon. Now, lastly, rebuilding is going to be a, a long and difficult process. All the things I just talked to you about are trying to get us back to normal, get us back to normal in our day-to-day -day lives. But we know that there's going to be a lot of rebuilding that needs to be done. And we have to work together and be patient about it. I spoke to the mayor this morning and told her that Hoboken is in the front of my mind. And whenever there's any assistance that needed here, we will be here to help. And I know that our partners in the federal government feel exactly the same way. So we've got a lot of work to do. But we've already accomplished a lot of things. From 2.7 million people out of, household, out of power, 2.7 million households, we're down to under a million in less than six days of work. And so we're making progress. We're doing the things we need to do. You know I'll continue to ride herd over these folks and make sure that what needs to get done will get done. And one of the people who knows how to ride herd as well is standing to my right. We have a lot in common. I'm a former U.S. attorney. She's a former U.S. attorney. She's a former governor. I'm still the governor. <laughs> and now she's the Secretary of Homeland Security. We are good friends, um, and she is doing a great job for the president. And for us, I'm appreciative, appreciative of her being here. I want to introduce her for some remarks, the Secretary of Homeland Security, Secretary Janet Napolitano. Well, thanks, Governor, Mayor, uh, Senators, members of Congress, uh, all the officials who are here. Thank you. Thank you to the people of New Jersey, all of you who are working together to get through the aftermath of Hurricane Sandy, uh, one of the largest natural disasters ever to hit. Uh, the United States, a storm that covered an area the size of Western Europe, to give you a sense of scale. But no doubt, uh, New Jersey took a particularly hard hit, uh, and we know that. So uh, as much as we pre-deployed and pre-positioned, uh, working with the governor and his team as to where things uh, needed to go uh, in the aftermath of the storm, we've had to do even more. There are 4,400 FEMA personnel now deployed. Uh, there will be more coming. There are community relations teams on the ground by the hundreds. More are coming. These are people who are uh, sent to answer questions. That's one of the things people need now is information. Uh, what do I do about housing? Can I get unemployment coverage? How about child care? Is my kid going to be able to go to school? Uh, the teams are designed to help you get that information. The disaster recovery centers, like you see here and there, a warm place for people to go. You can get that information. Uh, you can get warm. There's a charging station in there for your devices, uh, all the kinds of things necessary uh, as we wait for power to finally be turned on. Uh, and we are working now with the cities and the state on uh, issues of infrastructure, much of which was heavily damaged in New Jersey and will have to be rebuilt and replaced. Uh, we know that uh, the assessments are, are beginning as we speak. Uh, the goal, of course, is to build an even better New Jersey than existed before. Housing. Uh, as we move through energy and gasoline, housing is really the number one concern. Uh, we lost a lot of housing stock here in New Jersey. Uh, and we don't even know yet which of the houses are uh, reparable and which are, are irreparable losses. Those assessments are going on right now, uh, as well as finding temporary housing uh, for individuals who can't move back to their home right away. Uh, we're going to have uh, at least two types. Uh, we're looking for apartments. Uh, we're looking for hotel rooms. 
uh, that we will uh, pay for uh, in the immediate aftermath of the disaster as we then work with each, uh, each household on what their ultimate housing solution is going to be. And we'll be working very, very closely with Governor Christie on this. Uh, as the governor mentioned, as power gets turned back on, gasoline uh, and gasoline, gasoline will become more available and the lines uh, should get shorter. Uh, there is no shortage of fuel per se. Uh, what has happened was the delivery system was interrupted and we've really had to rebuild it from scratch over the last few days, uh, power it up so we can get gasoline into people's cars and vehicles. I urge you to think about that tomorrow as we begin to commute to work. Uh, stagger your times for driving, that can help. Carpool, that can help. Use mass transit, that can help. Uh, the Department of Transportation is uh, putting 200 or 300, I think, more buses now uh, at disposal to go between New Jersey and New York. So we'll be working to augment the mass transit that's available, particularly so long as the PATH tunnel is down. Uh, so all of these things are underway. Uh, there's even more. Uh, but let me just close by saying that this is a team. We work with the city, a great mayor here. She's been just wonderful in this disaster. Work with the governor has been uh, really strong, a great partner to work with. Uh, work across the federal family from the Department of Defense, us, Department of Agriculture sending in Forest Service crews to cut down trees so that power companies can get to the lines. Uh, the Department of Health and Human Services sending medical teams uh, to augment medical services that are needed. The Army Corps of Engineers working the generator function, bringing in generators literally now from all over the country. We've been loading them on C-130s owned by the Department of Defense, loading them, offloading them here, plugging them into where the needs are greatest. By the way, as energy becomes available, we think we will then be able to start moving generators around, unplug them from what we have in now. We'll be able to cover some other areas that we haven't been able to cover yet. So it's all of a piece. It all works together. Last word I would say is as, 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 uh, as good at it as it has been, there is still real hardship going on out there. We are not done with this storm by any stretch of the imagination. We know people don't have power, don't have heat, don't have phone right now. We gotta work with those people, get that up and running. We gotta get these communities restored. We gotta get the infrastructure replaced. That will take some time. Uh, so working with us, the community as a whole, patience, we're gonna keep moving forward as aggressively as we can, bring the resources to bear and bring into this great state. So thank you very much. And I, I think I'll be seeing more of you in the coming days. Thank you.